Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearlism here listening to my NHL Pearlism. Got my jammies on. Actually, it's my night shirt because it's nighttime, and I didn't feel like going and changing. You know, I just don't care what I look like, anyways. If you did, you wouldn't be watching in the first place, right? Right. Uh, okay. So yesterday, well, we still got games going on here. Um, I will talk. I'll talk about the games a little bit from last night because there wasn't too many. But first of all, before we got a little housekeeping to do, I didn't see any parlays in the comment section there yesterday. So nobody's getting points. Nobody's gaining points for the free premium package of PayPal next month. We have somebody who's winning right now. Uh, and over at Patreon, we have people over there doing their parlays. And uh, they're going to get a free month. And when we hit 50 subscribers, which we are going to do, uh, we will then do a draw and somebody is going to get a one year free. Not to mention people are just making money. Uh, last night, looks uh, I had the LA Kings and the under. They're winning 2 nothing right now against Minnesota. Uh, in the second, and it doesn't look like Minnesota will be scoring anytime soon. I don't think the Kings are going to, you know, it looks like pretty secure. Um, the other game, um, we had uh, Las Vegas in the under to beat Colorado. However, I was not confident about that. Very small pearls on that one. Uh, for, except for the under, I think I had medium pearls on the under because I did like the under there. Mostly because Vegas isn't scoring five on five very well right now. Colorado was still out a lot of players. However, they look really good still. Uh, once they get their full uh, entourage going there, I don't think they Colorado is going to be losing too many games the rest of the year. Remember, everyone, to subscribe, hit the bell, get yourself a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace knitted by Helen. Sent out by Melissa and Hernandez in the Perlocopter right to your land. And you just wait, sit there, it'll come right down, and everybody in your neighborhood can do the Perlo dance. You know what you do. You do it all the time, right? Like that, everybody? There you go. Do it. Come on. Do it now. Come on. Stick in the mud. Okay, so. Yesterday, what else did we have? We had, okay, this was the bad one. First, we'll get the bad one out of the way. I had the Rangers and the under. It was 4-2 New Jersey. Now, Mr. Rangers people, uh, Quinn, uh, you're on the hot seat, sir. Just so you know, I know you're watching, because why wouldn't you be? Everybody's watching. Uh, you're on the hot seat, sir. I'm, I'm almost positive of that. Uh, this team doesn't look good. You cannot be losing. I know New Jersey had a strong kept coming out. Lindy Ruff has got them playing with a lot of energy. Solid coach, but they hadn't played in 15 games, yo. You got to be beating that team. If you're not there, I'm really concerned about the Rangers. I had them as my possible surprise team before the season started. And uh, they're surprising me in the fact that they're sucking. They do. They look so disheveled. Um they need some defense there. We knew that. But going into last season, or going into the playoffs last season, they were humming, and they just don't have that energy this year. So I gave it a shot. I thought for sure, I thought they were going to have it. I, I wasn't a small play either. I was a pretty good play. Now my large pearl play came. I had the Islanders. Now I had the oh, I had the I think I had a small on the over. I never go over on the Islanders, but um, Hutt, Carter Hutton was in for Buffalo, and uh, they put Sorokin in, who looked good, but Buffalo kind of made him look good. I should know never, 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 because the Islanders are going to get up against a bad team or a team having a tough time, and they're still going to play defensive. They're not going to run up the score. It was a bad play by me. But it was small. My large pearl play, though, was the Islanders ML, and uh, that came through. So, now, 
With all that said and done, let's look at our picks for tomorrow. Are y'all excited? I see you are too. So you're still Perlo dancing. Look at, look at uh, Chanel. Chanel is still Perlo dancing. She never stopped, which I, I don't blame her because it's fun. It's fun. Okay, let's go to uh, the games for tomorrow. Tough card, boys and girls. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes uh, against the Florida Panthers. Do you know what I forgot to do? Well, we can do this together right now. I forgot to look at the weekly daily face-off, the weekly schedule. Highly recommend you check it out whenever you do picks. Uh, we're going to look at it right now. Carolina just finished playing. Where, where is this? February 1st to the 15th. Oh, okay. Okay, I got myself back. Carolina just finished playing Dallas. Dallas, day off. Going to play Florida. Florida. And this was all at home, at on the road. They played Dallas, Dallas on the road, right? And then came home. Now they're on a home. They just came home. They played three on the road. Okay, we'll keep that in the bank, in the memory bank. And we'll go look at Florida. Florida played on the – were they playing at home against Tampa? They were both days. Now they're going on the road to play Carolina, who just came home. Okay. All that being said, I'm still leaning Carolina in this game. Uh, but – and there's a but. It's not going to be for a lot of money because these Florida Panthers are surprising like crazy right now. Now they did lose heavy against. Uh, they did lose heavy against Tampa in the second game of the three-game series, but they came back and just were. They're outworking most teams. The thing is, with Carolina, I don't think they're going to be able to outwork them. I will have to say, though, um, I do believe Bob Roski. No, no, actually, Drager is the only goalie that's confirmed for all of these right now. They're putting Drager back in, which I've been saying all along. Roll with your best goaltender. I don't care if you're paying Bob $10 million a year. And they are. Now, Carolina, unfortunately, as far as we can tell right now, either goes to Nadelkovich or goes back to Reimer. Nadelkovich gives me a little... He just looks like he's he's playing not too bad. I, I'm not sure what they're going to do here. I think they might go with Nadelkovich. Either way, um, let's look at the total. Six. I like over six. I like over six here. Um, especially if Bob Rofsky's in that. That's probably the bigger play than Carolina ML, mostly because I think your juice on the ML is 161. That's not great. And I don't like them in reg. So up to you. If I had to take a choice, I'm going to lean Carolina, but it's not a super strong lean. I think, you know, um, my I, I like the total a little better there. All of these games are tough to pick. Now, Ottawa, Toronto. We know what happened, right? We know what happened. Ottawa or Toronto imploded, allowed Ottawa to come back into their game. And, and, and Ottawa came out in the second period um, and really just hit, played, found their energy by hitting and being aggressive. And basically, it's like DJ Smith said, you know, if we're going to lose this game, we're going to beat them. They kind of they kind of act like a modern version of the Philadelphia Flyers back in the day, uh, the Broad Street Bullies. Not just the Philadelphia Flyers; they're just like the biggest example of it. Uh, that if you were they were going to lose, they were going to beat the crap out of you. And Ottawa's getting that identity now. However, I don't think Toronto messes this up again. I think you're going to see Toronto play a more defensive game. I'm leaning more to the under here. Apparently, Murray's going to be back. That doesn't really make me think under. Uh, small pearls, because it could easily be over. Murray's coming off the injured list. He was looking good before he got injured. Uh, 
I'm leaning to him going back to being good again. And if they, and I'm also considering they're putting Anderson in for, what am I doing with my hand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing there. Okay. <laughs> Toronto, I think I'm leaning, uh, yeah, Tor uh, Toronto in regulation to get the juice, which is only going to pay you 150 some. So I'm not a huge fan of this card. And I'm going to put a small on the under here. Uh, Detroit, Chicago. Now, Detroit has looked better and better every game. Um, Chicago's been on the road for quite a while. Let's go back to our weekly thing because it's very important to know what teams have played. Detroit, uh, I thought they played Chicago last time. The 14th. Oh, you know what? I got to go like this. That's my problem. I screwed up. So we go back to Carolina again. Carolina actually is on. Are they on three games in four nights? I could change everything. No, they're not. Okay. Never mind. Uh, and Florida is not either. Florida is not on three games in four nights, but they played Detroit, Detroit, back. To, no, they didn't. They played Tampa Bay. Did they play Tampa Bay back to back? No. Okay. It's not going back. That's what the problem is here. Why isn't it going back to the previous week? Nashville, Nashville. Where did they play Tampa Bay? God, excuse me while I get really upset here. Florida, Tampa Bay, at Tampa Bay, and then against Carolina. So, yes, I'm taking Carolina. Anyways, um, and then I'm going Wings ML against Chicago. Um, I just think they've looked better. They're out shooting their opposition quite a bit. Um They're at home against Chicago. They then are at home against Chicago, again against Chicago. Chicago beat them last time at home. Um, and I thought Detroit looked pretty good in that game. This is also going to depend on goaltending. I want to see, I want to see Grice in net here. I also am going to, again, Lean the under. I think Lankanoon will be in for Chicago. I'm sorry for that mis movement, but I'm not stopping. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay, anyways, I wanted to show you that too because the weekly schedule is a very important part of our picks. Uh, so what do we have? Flames versus Vancouver Canucks. I hate this game. I hate this game. It's in Calgary. <laughs> Vancouver, I, I think I've given up. I think I've given up with Vancouver. I got to go Calgary here. There, it's it's not really a back-to-back, -back, but Calgary played in Vancouver, and then Vancouver flew to Cal back to Calgary. Um, Calgary's just playing too dominant of a game. Vancouver's defense is not coming around. I could be wrong here. I thought Vancouver was going to turn it around after being really tired, but it looks like their um, it looks like their maturity just isn't there. Uh, I talk about it in my we talked about it. Uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey, uh, Peyton from Peyton on the radio. 
I do a live show from 3 to 5 Eastern, five days a week. I do it tomorrow. And we talked about it where um, Tanav, when he was traded to Calgary, they his nickname used to be Dad there. And I think he was just a moral and uh, spiritual um, upliftment to that team. And it, they just look lost since he left. And I have to admit, I didn't see this coming because his I didn't think his work on the ice was going to create this much of a problem. But apparently it's not about on the ice. It's about the whole presence of who he is and, I, and that may sound weird to people but i understand it because i've had guys on my team where they, they've been as soon as they go it just changes the whole energy of your team and apparently tana was that so i'm going to go with calgary also if they're going with markstrom markstrom is playing vesna level demko is doing the best he can um, I still think he's a fantastic goaltender. It's just the overall energy of Vancouver. I've given up on him. I took him last time. I'm not going to take him now. I am still going to lean the under here, uh, but small pearls. This whole card, I'm not betting crap loads on. Simple. I, I don't think so. And now in Winnipeg, Edmonton, um, uh, uh, I got to see Edmonton play a combination of defense and offense that supports betting on them on a regular basis um hopefully they're not going to go back to smith i couldn't possibly imagine that i'm really starting to question dave tippett's uh decision making also lagason in uh, is injured and he's really the only defensive defenseman they've have on that team right now um something they're severely lacking i over under here i'm taking winnipeg uh again ml um but i'm not betting a lot because edmonton can turn it around in a second i just it's very tough i'm, I'm totally on the fence on this game to tell you the honest truth i'm taking winnipeg just because i think that hollabuck can save them more often than Koskinen can save the Oilers. I also think their defense has more pieces that are conducive to helping Hollebuck than Edmonton's defense has for than helping uh, Koskinen. Uh, offensively speaking, um, you know, Dreisaitl and McDavid can win you games, and that's it. But, I mean, you just can't rely on that so much, so much, so much. I'm just not seeing the overall uh, – I just don't get confidence from Edmonton right now, and I'm getting a little more confidence from Winnipeg. You might as well take the juice at 210, I suppose. Um, as far as going to the weekly schedule, they're basically mirroring each other. I'm not going to bring it up here. Uh, injuries are n not significant enough except for, like I said, about Lagason. Uh, Dubois out for Winnipeg, but I mean, they've been playing without Dubois quite most of the time. He just came in once. So Edmonton should be able to win this game. Edmonton should be winning more games like this, but until I see a more complete game from them, I'm going to probably fade them. Well, boys and girls, that's my 442. Thank you for coming here into this programming. Uh, Again, you can comment in the comment section, anything, just anything, and I will give you a rest of this month for free. Just give it to you for free over at Patreon. You can go check out our premium packages. I just went parlays. I'm seven. I got seven wins on parlays and five losses uh, at an average of about just under four per four units per. So putting a unit on each one would cost 12 units. Four times seven is 28 units. Up, up uh, what's, what's that, 18 units on my parlays. Uh, for um, hockey, I give picks for just about every game, over and under. You go over there, I write up, a, uh, I write up every day, each game, my over and under, okay? 
my large pearl picks are hitting very well. Those are the ones I'm most confident in. Probably about 65, 70%, something like that. Um, somebody on there said I should tabulate it. I just don't have time. I'm working on getting somebody to do all of that, to take care of my parlay challenge, take care of my percentages and picks and stuff like that because working on steelflyers.com, which I do uh, every day, like I said, um, highly recommend you go check that out, actually. Steelflyers.com, all sports network. We're getting bigger and bigger. Next week, I might have a guy named Jim Jackson. You might know him. He's the voice of the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, he's part of our organization. That's how big we're getting over there. So go check it out, steelflyers.com. Uh, if you're out there and you want to take care of that, I'll give you a free month for life. So you tell me. I had this lady, Chanel, and she kind of backed out a bit. I'm, I'm waiting for her. I'm kind of waiting on her, but if you're out there and she ends up not taking it, just let me know in the comment section and I'll give it to you. Well, boys and girls, that's our full 42. I hope these picks bring you tons of pearls into your environment. Tons. Infinite amounts of pearls coming to you in this fine programming. And uh, that's my full 42%. That's all I have to give today. So you go out there and have yourself a great day. Lots of love to you. Okay. Bye.